well, what's it going to look like in the future? A lot of words up there to say create and influence an ecosystem of advocates. Well, what does that look like? I'm not sure yet, but there are a lot of people out there who can advocate on behalf of the company or who can kill the company. Uh, steward the company's values, brand, and reputation. Shape the culture and behaviors and create a new blended physical and virtual work environment. Uh, empower employees as communicators. So when I read this, I had to say, okay, well, maybe they don't need a communications department then if every employee becomes an advocate for the company and every employee becomes a communicator, what do you need a department for? And the analogy that I came up with was uh, rather than uh, simply playing one instrument, which we used to do, perhaps the better analogy for the corporate communications professional of the future is they are more of an orchestra conductor. You may not be doing any of these things. You may not be controlling or writing or producing any blogs or any of these things yourself. But your role is going to be to kind of keep track of things and make sure that you coordinate things, that HR is doing what it's supposed to do, that marketing is doing, and you coordinate the messages so that you're saying the same thing internally and externally and to all of those uh, audiences. The audiences that we used to address, obviously media um, is very important, both yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, but there's a whole list of others that we have to be concerned about today. Uh, the channels of communication have also changed. Um, tomorrow, um, town halls, Web 2.0, uh, just enabling in, uh, other people to be advocates on behalf of the corporation. Content. It used to be the content was controlled by the PR department. Had to be approved. Nothing got said about the company unless it was approved by PR and then sent out and duly published by the media. Uh, today, you don't have control. Uh, you have influence, but you don't have control. And then finally, our measurement of value. Um, we've gone from activity-based, saying, I'm justifying my existence because I'm putting out a lot of news releases or I'm doing a lot of activity or we're holding a lot of town hall meetings. We're doing a lot of things. That's gone uh, to maybe changing attitudes today. We want to influence behavior. We want to influence purchase behavior, those kinds of things. In the future, it may just be pure impact-based. What impact are we having? And what changes are we affecting in policy? Uh, what changes are we affecting in the way that we do business in this world? The functional disciplines are also changing. The skills are changing. Writing is critically important. In fact, most PR people came out of a journalism background 20 years ago. Today, writing is still very important. Communication skills are very important. But you're seeing people with law degrees. You're seeing people with MBAs. You're seeing people with social science degrees and psychology degrees, all getting involved in corporate communications. Uh, because they each bring a different set of skills and talents to the table. Um, it's critically important that you not only be able to communicate well, but that you understand how to interact with people and that you understand how relationships are built and that you understand how your business is operating and that you understand the legal environment that you're operating under. And so you can see that to be effective, corporate communications department needs more than just journalists. We need people who understand law, who understand finance, who understand business, understand a lot of these areas. Um, so you know, maybe a good combined degree would be a communication degree. Get a job with a company and get them to pay for your MBA. And that might be a good solution. The talent pool, I think I've just mentioned this. It used to be reporters, journalists. Today it's much broader than that. And then finally, leadership. Um, used to be a vice president of public relations was the top title. Today, uh, senior vice president of corporate communications generally reporting to the CEO. We're seeing a lot of that. In the future, the title may be Chief Communications Officer uh, for most uh, uh, people rather than just for a few. Um, so the key takeaways. Obviously, the digital revolution has changed things. It's added a level of complexity. Uh, the global economy. You saw some of the changes in how fast uh, emerging countries are growing. Uh, the empirics and empowerment of new stakeholders, uh, and then people no longer automatically deferring to authority. Um, it's changed the way you need to communicate. 
Um, instead, people are, are saying, I'm not going to do something just because you asked me to or because you said I should. I'm going to do it because I believe that you have my best interest at heart. Uh, and then reputation management is going to become, I think, a key phrase that you'll see used a lot in corporate communications. We're really about measure, managing and measuring the reputation of the company. And we want to make sure that we have that permission to operate, um, as Arthur Page noted. So the question is, who is capable of doing this? You look at what you're being asked to do in the corporate communications position. Who can see the future? Who can really see around corners? Who understands all these social networks and psychology and relationships and how to build trust? Um, who is going to also bring excellent communication skills to the table? And the reason that you could argue that corporate communications is going to be obsolete is because communications may become embedded inside of the organization and embedded in these other functions. And you no longer have a corporate communications department. Instead, everybody is expected to be an effective communicator and is expected to adhere to company values and expected to be an advocate on behalf of the company. So you can see where things may change in the future. If we view our, our jobs as merely the mouthpiece of the organization and the spokesperson for the organization, we probably will have short careers. Um, but if we can find a way to become relevant and if we can find a way to influence and build that network of relationships, then we probably have a very valuable role to play for the corporation. So when the CEO asks, why am I paying you, think about the answer that you're going to give them. So with that, I will open it up for any questions, uh, and I thank you very much for your time. No question. Yes, in the in the back. Um, how did those restrictions get a negative response? Well, the 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 question was on a scale of. Uh, one to ten, do you trust these folks implicitly? And then um, we also had a scale about distrust. You know, who do you not trust? And so the people that they did not trust were, were counted as negative numbers. The people that they said they trusted were counted as positive numbers. I knew that one of your students was going to nail me sooner or later. That was a good question, thanks. Yes. It's really about creating a culture within the company, isn't it? I mean, in some companies, you still have the idea that, uh, <clears throat> I, th I think that the CEO has a, a tremendous influence on the tone and the tenor of the company. And one person can actually make a huge, huge difference. If the CEO of the company has created a culture that uh, people feel free to suggest new and better ways of doing things, and they're not afraid to suggest an idea that may be viewed as silly. Then I think you'll see more of those ideas coming. Um, but if, if you've got a culture that's very insular, and the executive suite is up on a floor that nobody ever goes up to, and nobody ever sees those executives, and they're isolated, and they bring in consultants to do the, the, the new ideas and the strategic plan and all of that, I think if that culture is very layered, hierarchical, and isolating, you're not going to get a lot of that exchange. But as companies have flattened out and as uh, some of the silos have been broken down and you no longer have this group versus this group versus this group, instead it's all of us working together, you see some of those changes and you see exchange of ideas.